up these. Right. Kate Shannon for UFIT Studio. That'd be me. Right. So let's get into then why. Uh, always I start this by explaining why I'm going to cover this topic uh, and what's been going on. Um, essentially, uh, stress levels, like I said, uh, don't seem to have uh, reduced or alleviated, however you want to word it. They haven't appeared to actually come down uh, now, since actually, since the last lockdown. Uh, I'm having quite a lot of conversations about stress levels with clients, uh, different reasonings, different pressures, different expectations, maybe. Um, the whole uh, who to have around for Christmas stress day is actually a real one. Um, and I have legitimately got some some uh, overlap, I think, of chronic stress um, and discussions around mental health throughout this year. And there is still most definitely almost like a hangover from this year with client conversations and how they're doing with it or um, how they're attempting to deal with it. Uh, with some su varying success. I think that's a fair statement to make, actually. Varying success. Uh, now, if I'm going to talk about strategies, I've talked about strategies before. The thing about strategies is that strategies have a step-by-step -step, uh, structure. So each strategy I want to talk about today does have a step-by-step -step structure and has an outcome. Now, I like to talk about strategy. Strategy. <laughs> Join me while Helen loses her mind, ironically, about mental health, trying to speak. Uh, so, strategies are like a, uh, a recipe, that's how I like to see strategies. They have a step-by-step -step instruction um, of how to produce an outcome, and the end result is what you're looking to do. The, the strategy or the recipe uh, is we're looking to find something that has a nice, easy step that even I can follow if I'm cooking something and nobody dies of poisoning. So it's very much like a strategy you're looking for mental health. I don't know why I said that, where I went with that. However, the idea is, is that you feel better, not worse. OK, so any of these strategies about feeling better and not worse. OK, so that's important to remember um, that the strategy is about feeling better. So let's get into things. So I've got six of them to go through. So we're looking at firstly, now this is one that, that is a little bit unexpected, but is actually very important and one that I've been um, looking at closely the last uh, couple of months as well, and that's gut health. Uh, now, gut health is incredibly important when it comes to mental health, and people are like, well, why? Uh, and then I'll ask you the question, if you've ever uh, been bloated and feeling awful when you wake up and sluggish, it's an absolute adder onto people's mental state or how they're feeling. It absolutely does give them a, a right old come down when it comes to, in terms of dealing with their mental health. It really does create a lot of pressure. So you're looking at removing inflammatory foods or uh, where possible processed foods, right? This might sound like I'm just gonna talk about eating healthy food because I want to lose weight. Actually, it's not. Um, a lot of people say to me, the healthier they eat or the more color they eat, the better they feel about themselves, actually. And the more they feel uh, good about the, themselves, right? The better, the, the, the good, the better feel fantastic right so it's important to think about gut health as that it is actually important for mood as well as looking after your overall health um it's good for improving sleep quality the more uh, unprocessed food you eat the less salty food the better quality of sleep you have which has a massive impact on mental health or mental state of mind uh, so, so everybody knows if they've been eating really salty food or processed before bed, what's the likelihood of you waking up in the night and not feeling so good? Pretty high. Um, so all those things really impact and have a massive impact on mental health. Um, so that's st strategy number one. So the step for that is to actually start looking at eating uh, less processed foods, less inflammatory foods if they know you, they make you quite bloated, and move towards more colourful, less processed food, whole food, if you want to call it, right? Whole food actually makes people feel good, right? Food of thought! It does actually work. Um, in terms of now, this one, you're going to think, she's just because she's a bit she's a PT, of course she's going to say that. Daily exercise. Now, what I want to clarify before I get into this, when I talk about strategies, um, I'm not talking about joining a hit class or bar class or Les Mills or whatever or doing a met class or a boot camp. I'm actually just talking about daily activity. So that means going outside and going for a walk. That's what it means. If that means going out to see a friend and going for a walk, even better. Because what's that going to do? No, you get out of your house, get you moving. Also, spend time talking to a friend, which is only ever going to help. So when I say um, 
daily exercise. I don't mean running a marathon, I mean exercise. So actually just to improve mood and overall uh, mental health is just walking even is adequate enough really to get that sorted. Um, strategy for that is literally that. Find a habit you want to attach to an exercise, uh, something that gets you moving, gets you out and about and you will actually uh, see some improvement. Now, this one, this one I have a couple of clients in mind over this one. And we, I mean, don't worry, I'm just not saying I'm picking them on the most thing we have. My clients and I have talked about this. Reducing social media, and I love this word, exposure. Reducing social media exposure. Uh, there's, a mat, there's a really fantastic documentary on Netflix about it. And if anyone wants to find out about the scary side of social media, uh, have a check out that. I'm, I'm not going to plug the name. Um, it was fascinating though. But actually, uh, it has a huge impact when clients reduce their contact with social media 30 minutes up to an hour before and or after sleep in their mental health state because they're not thinking about some of the things I've talked about like comparison, etc. Um, uh, over the last couple of days. And also, uh, it, it just uh, with people's uh, opinions, etc. Everyone had that. I've had people say I've literally had to come on Facebook to remain sane because actually I get far too involved in other people's opinions and I'm actually winding myself up and making myself feel stressed and anxious and my uh, mental state is then completely shifted off gear um, because I'm exposing myself to social media on a hard court. So absolutely, reducing social media exposure for 30 minutes before bed as a strategy, as a plan, is hugely effective in reducing or controlling some of the mental health uh, conversations that I'm having or mental state conversations. And number four practice because I'm not going to count for a while. Number four, gratitude logs, right? Gratitude logs are free as a bird, right? I'm actually doing, funny enough, I'm actually doing one on my iPad, um, which is free actually, uh, just for my, my first thing in the morning I do my gratitude log. I have quite a few clients who do them in writ written form, they do them once a week, they don't have to do them daily. Um, we have a group of clients right now on the, um, the drop challenge, right? The drop one dress size challenge, who are actually doing that on a video log, so they're vlogging to their, their private group. And actually part of that is to name things they are grateful for. The outcome of doing that is hugely beneficial for positivity because, um, and we all know that if we've been in the funk and we're focusing on the things that are going wrong, we very rarely actually stop and look at all the very, very small things that are going fantastically that are making us feel good. So gratitude logs are a brilliant way of actually bringing that into focus for us and they are completely free, which is a Brucey bonus. The strategy for that is exactly that. It is always first thing in the morning, I find is really effective for people to change how they start the day, the mental start point, um, to be grateful for something uh, if they're not sure how the rest of the day is going to roll, right? So it's good to have that, that moment of power over your own mood and how you set out for the day. So number five, and I have, again, is quite quite prevalent at the moment. I also have a, a I'm thinking of one quite in particular, but creating a wellness routine. So wellness routine is a brilliant way of making it very open ended for yourself, and also uh, making oh, it's quite creative actually. When I think of the client in mind that's doing this, it's very creative. Um, it's literally the wellness routine is creating a set amount of time per day, and that can be actually it can be can start quite small and build. So you know, this particular client has an hour a day um, where whatever it takes for somebody to feel good in that hour, they will do it as in, if it means going out and uh, meeting a friend for a walk. For example, Rex, I'm using the same example. If it means going out and do a hobby they enjoy, reading a book they love, meditating, spending time in the garden by themselves, um, do whatever it takes, right? Everyone out, a client also goes for a drive occasionally just for the sake of relaxing. Now, if that's what it takes to have a well-being routine, then that's what it can be labelled as a strategy. A well-being routine is solidifying something on a regular basis for a set amount of time that makes someone feel well or feel better about themselves. And it is, as I said, open-ended because I can check in with a client and say, okay, what did you do to make yourself feel good today? Or what did you do yesterday? How much time you spend making yourself feel better about your current mental states? It leaves so much open to creativity. It can be baking. I've had clients bake with the kids. I've had uh, clients have like create schedule to phone friends and family, but make that part of their wellness routine, right? Which leads actually, not intentionally, but smoothly, on to number six. So the final strategy, and that is to talk. 
I mean, it is actually, as, as I say, it's as simple. It's not as simple for some people to talk about where their mental state is at any given time, especially if they sense they're going to be judged for opening up and saying exactly how they're feeling because it might not be positive. And so they struggle to say something to anybody with an immediate circle or friends or family, and therefore it comes out in uh, in different ways that perhaps they wouldn't like in terms of their emotional mood, etc. Um, so it's important to, to check in with yourself and know how willing and able and ready you are to talk about what your mental state is. Because the most powerful tool um, is to talk, right? The most deconstructive or destructive um, way of dealing with stress is to remain silent. Okay, so silence is the absolute enemy of improving your mental state because without it, without talking, there's no way of putting those strategies in place. That's why people have coaches um, like ourselves to sound bored off and create suggestions or ways of, of looking at different strategies like this to allow them to move forward and move out of the rut or whatever's happening in terms of their, their mental state. Because actually all of this is key. Um, as, as I know I've talked about uh, less processed foods and, and being active. Without all these strategies in place, long term, a lot of clients will struggle to remain healthy and, and because all of us at some point will hit the skids when it comes to a stressor. Like the life, you know, life does not always end. It's not always going to be uh, perfect. Like this year has showed us that life can throw some massive curveballs. And actually having some of this stuff in play as a strategy, as part of your routine, your wellness routine, your, your gratitude log, your understanding of how much you're dialing into social media, how often, how much being active, looking after what you're putting into your body. All these things are actually long-term strategies for anybody looking for great health, both mentally and physically. This is that right now, a lot of this needs to be deployed so that we can get through the next couple of months actually feeling as good as we possibly can, right? So that's the six done. I am gonna recap because things important and I just kind of have. So six strategies, just want to scratch. Six strategies, strategies? <laughs> six strategies of how to deal with your or improve your mental state shall I say so definitely look at what you're consuming in terms of your food your you your energy your uh, attitude to yourself how you feel about yourself is massively impacted by your food choices um think about the foods that make you feel terrible in the middle of the night when you wake in the morning because you know your sleep's gonna be impacted and start to move those out and replace them slowly 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 just replace and move forwards helps you manage your stress levels, helps you manage your sleep quality on a huge scale, as does daily exercise, to be fair. Again, that helps with sleep quality. Although I'm not necessarily talking about going out and going crazy on yourself. I'm just talking about being active, actually getting out and about, doing something, moving. Moving is the most important thing. Um, reduce or monitor your social media contact, um, ideally before and when waking. 30 minutes to an hour usually has a huge impact. I do have some clients that do go cold turkey. Uh, as, as a huge boost to improve the mental health and that, that goes a long way as well. Um, gratitude logs, free as a bird these ones and have a huge impact on how someone feels at the start of the day and it can make a massive difference to mental states. Uh, creating that well-being routine, oh, a mouthful today, well-being routine, whatever that is, for however long that is, uh, to help you feel better about yourself uh, and then demands on your life and understanding that silence is your enemy Okay, silence is the enemy in this situation. Uh, talking is a great strategy in itself. And that one is very unique and is part of why we do what we do at UFIT because each individual has different ways of communicating and a part of that relationship with the coach is understanding the best strategy, yes, but also uh, being able to open up to somebody and talk about it is, a, is primarily a fantastic skill to have. So, tomorrow. <laughs> The common mistakes and why you're not losing weight. Again, bold statement. I'm making bold statements this week on these lives. Uh, so that will be tomorrow. Sorry, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow at uh, five o'clock. So join me tomorrow at five for that one. As always, in the meantime, have a fantastic evening 